Hey guys, Marissa at KitchenTableStamper.com. It's a brand new catalog, start a celebration, and I have a really cute treat box for you. This is our Let's Craft Live project. Every other Thursday, we play a craft along live video I do on YouTube and on Facebook. And this is our project for this week. Um, we are curating a collection of useful treat boxes and this one is made kind of big i've got a madeline cookie here i get these at costco and you can also pick them up on amazon they're the perfect little treat with their almond flavor to go with the new nature's sweetness mega sweet so let me show you we've got our lovely and sweet bundle and this is our little almond bloom branch. We're going to use that one today. And then we're also going to use Notes of Nature, which is the other bundle that goes in this um, suite. And then for our sentiment for the little box, I'm pulling out Autumn Leaves. This is a carryover from the holiday catalog. Um, I love the with a grateful heart for this treat box and the font is just perfect. So that's what we're using today, brand new products. Um, let's go ahead and start by stamping our little almond bloom and we're gonna color it. We're gonna use an aqua painter or a water brush or water painter and reinkers for this. So I've got my little Stampin' Up palette here. Now this is a um, part, one of the pieces that goes with the new um, glass mat studio you can get the glass mat studio with this palette with your starter kit when you join during celebration so you want to check out the join page on the blog it's linked below it'll have all the details about the starter kit um, specials that are going on during celebration did i mention celebration started today how exciting all right so i'm putting a couple of drops of petal pink a couple of drops of pecan pie, a couple of drops of Lost Lagoon ink, and then I just set them right aside. This is pecan pie, this is Lost Lagoon, and this is petal pink. Once we add water to it, it's gonna be really easy to tell that, but I arranged my little bottles where they're at in the palette because they all look so similar right now, okay? So that's just a little tip there to help you remember where you dropped which ink. And then I've got some Pebbled Path ink and some basic white cardstock. We're gonna stamp our almond image using Pebbled Path on basic white. And we are, we're gonna watercolor on basic white cardstock and that is okay. So we got our little um, almond image here. It's a big stamp. I like to either bring the stamp to the ink pad or the ink pad to the stamp. We don't ever do the symbol monkey because then you don't get even ink coverage. All right, so we've got our stamp inked up and we're going to make an impression here. Let me slide this up just a little bit. There we go. You wanna walk your fingers along the back and pay particular attention to the center of the image. Um, put a little extra pressure there and then there's our image isn't that gorgeous all right so we want to give that a minute just a minute to dry before we actually watercolor so I've got one over here that's dry and ready since we're watercoloring with a water based ink outline we want to go ahead and give that just a little bit um, to dry and then we're going to add a couple of drops of water right next to our ink. And we're gonna start with the Lost Lagoon. We're gonna water that down, make ourselves a little palette here. Then I'm going to start at the base of the leaf with the Lost Lagoon ink. That's so the most concentration will be at the base of the leaf. Now you can move over into the next leaf if you want and kind of work the color out of the brush at the base. And then as you start to see the color getting lighter and lighter as you lay it down, 
and you can go back to some of the first ones and just add a lighter shade to the end of the leaves. So you're just gonna work that color out of the brush to give the shading that you want. And here it is dry and you can see that we've got more intense color at the base of our leaf and we just clean our brush out as we go to the end. If you're finding you've got too much ink on your brush, you've got a big palette here where you can just really um, water down your ink. You can pick up a little bit more, bring it in. I love this little palette for that. We're going to fill in at the base of these leaves and see as we move up the brush clears itself of ink and the intensity just softens. You can add more ink at any time. You can't take it out. So just keep that in mind as you're going. You can even go back after you've done one or even after it's dried and add a little bit more ink if you want to to get a little bit more intense color but there's our leaves and then you'll want to clean your brush before you move to the next color. I just keep a little bit of paper towel here and we'll swipe until it's clean. Now we're gonna move on to the pecan pie. Just drag a little bit of ink out, water it down, get a little more water. And there's our palette starting to work for us. We're gonna swipe across the almonds let the color clear from the brush as you go you can go back and add some intensity where the artist drew in some lines or at the corners the ends perfect there it is we're going to clean our brush Oh, I almost forgot my little buds down here at the bottom. Let's add a little bit of brown on those buds, those almond buds. Now we've got a clean brush and we're gonna do the same with our petal pink. Pull a little bit of ink, mix it with a little bit of water, get less intensity. If you're finding that it's still too intense, move to the bigger part of your palette. Grab a little more water. You can really water it down over here. And then we're going to just dab a little bit of pink radiating from the center of the flower and letting our brush clean itself out as we move toward the ends of the petals so that they're softer and softer. If you're still getting a little bit too much intensity, you could dab on your towel. But there is our almond blossoms. Pretty pretty, isn't it? All right, but always swipe off, clean your brush put this aside. I'm going to make more of these. In fact, it's, I'm going to make a thank you card like this. So I'm just going to leave my palette when I'm done with it, when I've done all the watercolor and I want to with this colors, then I'll rinse it with clean water and it'll clean right up. Any ink that dries will be reactivated with water from your aqua painter. So you can keep using this palette again and again until you're done coloring all those similar images. Now we're going to set this aside and we're going to let it dry completely and then die cut it with the matching die from the lovely and sweet bundle. All right, so we've got our focal image and it's all cut out. Now let's make our treat box. We're gonna start with pebbled path cardstock and I've got six and three quarters by eight inches. This is our template. The template photo will be on the printable project sheet on the blog. The link to the blog is below. When you get to the blog, you'll click on the little button underneath the embedded video that says today's project sheet, and it will download a free PDF with all the measurements, supplies, pictures, step-by-step -step instructions. All right, now we're gonna start with the eight inch side in the simply scored we're going to do one and a quarter three and three quarters five inches seven and a half rotate to the right and we're going to score at one and a quarter five and a half and six and one eight 
get a bone folder and work those score lines and trim up according to the template. All right, here we go. All right, we wanna start with this larger panel on the left, the glue tab on the right. And we're gonna quickly and easily just liberate the bottom tabs of the box. So cut straight on the rectangle and then angle on the squares. The squares are your adhesive tab. So when you cut that little angle, you cut out some of the bulk and just make a neater bottom. We're going to do straight on the rectangles for this flap too, and then cut a little angle, make this square a trapezoid. When we get to the last little rectangle here, we'll cut straight on the rectangle side and then cut off this little rectangle in the corner then angle, make a glue tab, and then come up to the end of the glue tab. I'm gonna cut at an angle and then cut off these two little squares. And then we're gonna move to the next score line. We'll cut straight down these two long rectangles. We'll cut a little angle on these short rectangles. And then same thing, long rectangles get the straight cut and then the short rectangles here get that little angle cut. Those are our tuck tabs and it's gonna make those tuck tabs a little less bulky. Now we don't need this little trapezoid at the end, so just cut that off. And we're gonna do the same thing with this tab. Straight along the rectangle, little angle cut, little angle cut on the end, and then remove the excess. There's our tree box. Let's get a corner rounder and we'll round up the top corners. I've got a quarter inch round that I'm going to use here. I got my little we are. All right, let's go ahead and assemble the box. You're gonna put adhesive. I like tear and tape adhesive. You can do liquid glue if you want to here, but put it on the long skinny tab close to the fold. Remove the liner. Don't fold on the first score line, fold on the second score line. You can bring this back, burnish it flat. This is the back of the box. So we'll pop the bottom sides and then the back to the front. And then I like to put a little bit of adhesive on the back and on the front. So when you close it up, you'll get double, like an equal sign of adhesive on the bottom of the box. So let's go ahead and remove the liner. Square up the bottom of the box and then burnish from the inside with the bone folder. There's your cute little box. Make sure you got the front side front. We don't want to decorate the back. The back side has the score lines, or the back side has the seams. See, so that's the back of our box. We can pop our little treat in and close up with a bull dog clip. Now, I've got an Amazon link for these little clips. They come in super handy, but if you've gotten Stampin' Up's library clips left or the Clever Clasps or something that's retired, you can use that. But if you don't have one, I did link the um, ones that I get from Amazon sometimes. I, they have a gold and like a bronze finish. I love, I love them both. All right, so then we've got a little more Stampin' and some die cutting to do here got two basic white pieces and check out the project sheet for sure but I think this is two and a quarter by four if I remember correctly and this is two and a half by five eighths of an inch the measurements are on the printable project sheet though so check that out we're going to grab our stamp and cut and emboss machine and add the cool edge to our white piece. Let me show you this cool edge. This 
nature's sweetness is inspired by like a field journal you know where a scientist would go out into the wild and um, sketch and make notes about what they found right and so there's this binding dye that comes in the notes of nature bundle that is just really cute it is worth the cost of admission so here's the edge dye and we're going to put that along the edge of our basic white piece i want to center it so that my holes start and stop at the same place you're going to have a, like a partial hole at each end put it down with some old washi tape i did a little bit of die cutting from these bundles ahead of time too so let me show you those let's get this edge cut on here all right are you ready carefully remove the tape and there it is see it does perforation and then binder holes just really cool um, accent that you can add to any project so something that you'll use with this bundle and suite of products but it will be handy for all kinds of uses actually binding things as well as just a really cute um, detail all right we're gonna do some stamping I'm going to use pebbled path and pecan pie I've got this field notes stamp and spatter and these are from that coordinating notes of nature stamp set i want to protect my workspace here because we're going to go off the edge we're going to do the field notes image with pecan pie and we want it kind of to the left of center and then little bit high of center is what I've got top to bottom and we're going to take the spatter and add some little speckles here to our piece and then we'll do our with a grateful heart greeting now my Grateful Heart Greeting comes from Autumn Leaves. Autumn Leaves is photo power, so I'm gonna grab my Stamp and Pierce mat just because if I had my um, glass mat from the new Join promotion, I probably wouldn't even grab my Stamp and Pierce mat, but with all the lights that I have here, it makes quite a glare. So I'll be using it only in select videos, mostly probably live where I can show and then take it away. But the glass mat, does work as well as if not better than a stamp and pierce mat so if you're um, following along with this promotion and you're thinking about that uh, I do think that I get amazing uh, stamped images when I use my glass mat all right so we've got our stamping done we've got some die cutting that was done ahead of time here's a pecan pie label and a gold foil branch now the little branch is from the notes of nature dies and the label is from lovely and sweet all from the same suite of products though and we're going to cut some chicken lips on our greeting all right so we're gonna just pop this in i've got my retired tailored tag punch but you can do this with scissors or you can do this with a square punch too if you have a square punch just use one of the corners and now we got a cute little sentiment sentiment banner let's roll up the corners of this a little bit we're going to make it look like the pages of our field journal are a little worn got a piece of designer series paper here this is from uh, nature's sweetness 12 by 12 designer series paper and this is one half by three and three quarters i'm gonna add that designer series paper well that's a cool one I hate putting glue on the cool side don't you all right let's add that along the binder just for a little extra texture behind our almond branch did you guys know that these nature sweetness are almond vanilla and cacao I don't know I picked it up right from the start and thought it was so wonderful but people are surprised every time I say it so if you hadn't noticed that so it'll be great for treats 
as soon as I saw it with the almonds, I said, oh, how nice that would be with the madeleines, which have a light almond flavor. So as soon as I saw this sweet, I knew that there would be treats with it. All right, so we've got our Grateful Heart layered onto the label. We've got our box all assembled here. Let's go ahead and add our stamped field notes piece. And we're gonna just put it right in the center. Now we can add our almond branch. I'm gonna put some dimensionals on the back of that. And we'll pop that over. The embellishments for this suite are pretty awesome. I really, I was not sure about the trim at first, but now that I'm using it, I am a fan. I love it. We've got adhesive back cork rounds, and we've got this gold faux leather trim. Really cool. We're gonna tie a little knot in the end of our trim. And then we're gonna pull that to the end. See, so we've got a little knot. We're gonna put a glue dot on the back of that knot. Got a little mini glue dot now. Our knot is sticky. Gonna add that to our treat box. And then get a ribbon scissor here because my paper scissors bounce off of anything that's not paper. We're gonna cut away from the spool. Then you can take another one of these little glue dots and roll it up. And I'm gonna put that right underneath the tail of the trim, just so that it's stuck down. Grab a glue dot. I'm gonna put one on the branch. I put it on the front side of the branch so that I can take my greeting and kind of audition where I want everything. And then pick up the branch on the greeting. Once you've got the branch on the greeting, then you can take a couple of dimensionals. I got half dimensionals here. And I'm putting them on either side of the faux leather trim. Remove the liner there and adjust our knot a little bit so it lays flat. Pop this guy onto those dimensionals. And there we have our sweet treat box. Let's grab some cork. I'm just going to put two little cork rounds right in that space there to kind of add to our collage background. And there it is. There is our Nature's Sweetness Sweet Treat Box made for the Madeline cookies. I hope that you'll try our craft along. It's called Let's Craft Live and we play every other Thursday. You're invited to join us. Check out the Kitchen Table Stamper Craft Social. That's our group on Facebook. There's a link below for all the details about that. If you've got any questions about the project, Email marissa at kitchentablestamper.com and to shop Stampin' Up! 24-7, you can buzz over to marissaelvarez.stampinup.net. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.